Hi there, day 45, uh, the 21st of November 2014. This is my journey of becoming a life coach and recording whether it's a scam or a success. Uh, my name is Danny Crouch and I have gone through a lot of changes over the years and this is the time, I'm 41 years of age, um, it's a time when I feel I'm going through my biggest changes and part of this is uh, joining a life coaching course through the Coaching Institute and I wanted to document and record um, from start to, to progress, wherever it ends up, um, my journey and see how it goes. I'll, it started out with uh, goal setting and motivation and I actually keep records in a diary uh, that I enter into every day and uh, trying to keep myself motivated by writing it. I've actually turned that into a video where I upload them to YouTube. This is, enables me to monitor the language I use, the tone of my voice, my facial features, the body language I give off, um, my weight, um, bags under my eyes, the double chins, all that sort of stuff, um, and how I progress as a speaker and, and how I look at life. Uh, the big parts about this whole journey, I think, is about focusing more on positivity rather than uh, negativity, and that is easier said than done, um, but I'm working on it, and it is simple things like rather than saying, uh, I can't or I won't or I don't, um, these negative sort of words, it's about putting everything in a positive frame of mind. Um, so this is the progress. Basically every day I go through a positive affirmation uh, that I want to remind myself every day by verbalising. Uh, it's, a, it's a mini goal as such. I also record my goals for the day, uh, my medium and long term goals, and I reflect on the last 24 hours of uh, what's happened to me, uh, how I've uh, approach to it, whether they're issues or whether they're great things in my life, um, and what I think about them and how they inflect my emotions, and whether this is working, um, the highs and lows, all that sort of stuff. Because um, you read these books of people after they've had their success and, and after they've done what they've achieved, but you don't really know what happened along the way and how hard or how difficult it was or how easy it was. Um, it all sounds like, you know, I, these guys are now making $10 million a year or they're retired or they travel around the world wherever they want to go. They do this, they do that, they do whatever they want, how easy, how lucky, all this sort of stuff. Um, it's not about that. It's about they had to get to where they are by um, applying themselves and committing to what they wanted to achieve. And most of us don't know how they did that. So I'm trying to document that and hopefully reflect on that and, and show that it can be done. Um, generally I try and keep these videos to about 10 minutes, recently they've stemmed over to 15, 17 minutes, but that's the way it goes. So getting stuck into it, um, throughout this process, I, as I said, I've made some changes. It's day 45, I'm actually um, day 37 of being smoke free. When I started this journey I was a, a heavy drinker, smoker, gambler, I didn't exercise much at all. Uh, didn't really worry about what I ate, pizzas, McDonald's, KFC, hot chips, love my hot chips. Uh, CC's, barbecue chips, chicken chips late at night, uh, chocolate, um, Allen snakes, all these sorts of things that I used to get stuck into, hardly ate much fruit and veg, um, all that sort of stuff. So I was a good case or a good example of um, someone that needed to make some changes health-wise, mentally, physically, all that sort of stuff. So 37 days of being smoke-free. I actually set myself a goal uh, with the Coaching Institute. They have an intake weekend, which is like an induction weekend. We actually have live face-to-face -face classes. Uh, I've got that coming up on the 6th of December. So uh, 13 days ago, I made a pact that I wouldn't touch alcohol until that weekend. Um, this is just a journey. I don't, uh, I'm don't. i identifying I may have had an alcohol problem um, because I kept going around saying I love drinking beer. Well, I don't think it was a case of love drinking beer. It was a case of I think I loved getting drunk. Um, the state of my mind and the where I was at when I'd get to that point of not caring about what was going on in my life and on what was going. So is that alcoholism? Quite possibly. So um, at this point in time, I'm not overly interested in, in quitting alcohol altogether. Um, I still would like to have a glass of wine at dinner or, or occasionally, have the odd beer, but I'd like to be able to go out and just have a couple of beers and, and not have to feel like having 12, 15 schooners, which someone who's six foot four and 120 odd kilos, it's quite easy to do. I'm not bragging, it's just, um, I could quite possibly drink 15, 18 schooners in, a, in an afternoon or evening session. Um, but um, so they're just a couple of things that have changed. I'm exercising every day, walking every day with my partner, Nick. 
Uh, I'm riding my exercise bike a lot more, uh, doing sit-ups and stretches. I used to have a really bad back. Um, it stopped me from playing golf. And uh, I'm getting into this fitness and, and exercise and whatnot. We're actually waiting my blood test today, and then we're going to see a dietitian. Uh, not because we want to go on crazy diets where we've got to cut out all these foods and only eat you know, grass or whatever they call these things. Uh, it's about a balanced diet. So if we should be eating meat for lunch instead of dinner and rice for lunch instead of dinner and cutting out bread or eating brown bread instead of white bread, all that sort of stuff. So it's not drastic changes. It's just being a little bit more healthy. Uh, so the affirmation, which does change and adapt now and then, uh, today I'll do everything in my power to reduce my weight to below 109 kilos by the 25th of December 2014. I'll complete my exercise, eat healthily and focus on my back being stronger. I am thinner and my back is stronger. Imagine how great I feel on Christmas Day. Uh, now my goals for today, generally some of them are quite the same. What I have found over the last month or so is how much they've changed in the sense of in the beginning they were really focused on money and business and work and trying to succeed there and that's what I sort of attain my goals to. They're developing now into something that I'm going to get more enjoyment out of, how I'm going to grow and how I'm going to learn. Um, so I'm trying to read, no, I am reading one hour a day, that is the goal. Um, going to bed and reading for at least half an hour at night and then throughout the day reading a little bit as well. Uh, my exercise, exercise routine, which I spoke about, walking in the morning and the evening, um, now, uh, to be finish and to finish and be completely full by 8:15 p.m. So that's a mindset thing where I'm not focusing on not eating after 8:15 uh, because whatever you focus on not doing, you tend to do. So if I don't want to eat after 8:15, the chances are if I think about it, I want to want to do it. So what I'm focusing on is being full by 8:15 and being completely finished uh, eating by then. Uh, I want to work more, some more on my golf coaching book um, and I want to work out and do some market research on the radio stations and TV stations and how people get interviews, how they get press releases, how they get marketing strategies, that sort of stuff. Um, so general enjoyable things that I actually do want to find out how to do. Um, they're not chores, they're not, they're not, goal, um, they're not um, tied into work or, or struggle or discipline or anything like that. Uh, my medium to long term goals, they actually changed a little bit. I'm also reading uh, Tony Robbins' book, uh, Awaken the Giant Within. Um, again, with the change in lifestyle, I wasn't much of a reader. I didn't read the newspaper. I hadn't picked up a book in probably four, three or four years. I go through fads where I might enjoy reading and then I'll read five books in the space of five months and then I won't pick up a book again for five years. Um, so I'm a hot and cold reader. I'm now getting into the routine of because I want to grow within myself, then a good way of doing that is reading. So that's the book I'm reading at the moment. It's actually at goal setting. Um, and it seems like the goals that I've been setting haven't been big enough or inspiring enough to really encourage me. And I'll go through this in the reflection. So one of them's changed slightly. Um, the medium term goal, what I do is I set up a three month goal, a six month goal, a 12 month goal and a one year goal. I set them around the 1st of November and then I'm counting them down. So uh, the three month goal has 72 days to go and I want to have three coaching books complete by the 1st of February 2015. My second goal was to have a paying speaking gig. And as you saw, I put these up on my whiteboard. I've actually changed that second one. It's now changed to, uh, to MC a coaching seminar for 500 people for our business. Um, so I'm dreaming, I'm waking up thinking about these things, about focusing on being on the stage and talking to these people and how I'm going to incorporate the other coaches into the seminar. So that's a bit better than just having a one paying speaking gig. That seems like it's a, it's a gig, it's a job, it's something that I'm aspiring to work for so I can make money. What I'm, I'm doing by changing this goal is by actually focusing on something that I want to achieve. I want to be able to get up and have the confidence that I believe I've got when I'm imagining it. Um, I feel like I can just, just sit there, stand on the stage or sit on the stage and tell these stories and have people encaptured in what I've got to say. Um, I have had um, concerns in the past of how my public speaking is. Um, the feelings inside, like nerves or adrenaline or whatever it is you want to call them, um, tend to take over and it gets me thinking about what I'm meant to be saying. I start, I, I, I hesitate uh, and I lose confidence. So outside of that ring, like I'm guessing most, a lot of people, I have that confidence within and I imagine that I've got it and I get up there and I'm going to do it. So that's what I want to set a goal to achieve. 
is A, to bring these people together, to get 500 people in a room, um, to be proud of achieving the fact that I've brought these people together and I've suggested to other coaches that we can do this. This is not going to be a workshop of, workshop of four people or ten people, you know, a feeling of deflation. This is going to be big. This is going to be hall. We need to hire a hall and we need to jam-pack these people in because so many people are keen to come and we're going to find ways to do that. So that's really developed that goal and changed it and given me something to work towards and inspire towards. And I can see just in reading the first two pages of this chapter of Tony Robbins' book how just that little bit of... Uh, adapt, adaptation to my goal has just changed a whole new light on it. Um, the six month goal is to have a business cruise and holiday booked. Um, that is business orientated, but I want the freedom to be able to do what I want when I want within my business. So not have to answer to anyone. So my guess, uh, I'm, I'm putting it out there that by organizing this business cruise and organizing this holiday, that I've got myself to a position where I have the freedom to book those holidays and to book a cruise that I'm going to get paid to go on to coach and mentor other coaches and their clients. That's something that's truly inspiring me and within me knows that I've taught myself how to leverage others, how to use leverage, how to use my marketing strategies and actually have a business model that works and it's an idea that I created. So that's a goal that um, other people may look at this or you may read this or, and not really understand it and I suppose that's why they're personal goals this, this one means so much to me so I haven't had to change that at all and the other one is to bleed below 100 kilos but within 6 months uh, again, very, very personal goal and this is all coming about about um, my back and how great it's going to be when I only weigh 100 kilograms and how I can get back into my golf and how I can do much more and how much more confident I'm going to feel and the impression that I'm going to give to others about my success story of how I've gone through this journey and it's this journey that's allowed me to lose that 20 kilograms. So if it can work in me, it can work in anyone. And that's got to be a goal that I want to achieve. And, and by videoing this, I can go back and reflect on how passionate I am in saying this. I'm pretty confident that a month ago when I was talking about this sort of stuff, I was, eh, you know, I'll try and get down below 109 kilos. Now it's whole, the whole reframing structure of how, why I want to do it and how I'm going to do it. Uh, the 12-month goal, uh, that's to have a successful business and for me to be earning over 100k per year. Again, another one that's focused more on the business and earning money. Um, not overly inspiring, so I suppose that's just a date that I'm putting out there that I want the business to go. I need to work on this goal. It's not extremely motivational, it's not extremely inspirational, but I can guarantee that if I get that 500 people in that room and I get that business cruise and holiday booked within three and six months, then the 12 month goal is a no brainer. So that's probably a bit too simple. I need to make it a bit more challenging. Similar to the three year goal, which has 1,077 days to go. That's to have uh, the home that I live in paid for, and we're still living here, so we own it. Um, again, another financial goal doesn't really inspire me. There's potential to have a self-managed super fund and pour money into that rather than paying tax on paying this place off. So it, whether this goal is beneficial, a three-year goal, is that something I'm going to aspire to? I've got to reassess that goal. I'm moving into the 14-minute mark, and I haven't really got back to my reflections, which is more of what I wanted to talk about today, but hey... That's the way this um, recording's gone. Um, one thing I did want to mention, and it may look a bit um, different on these recordings, is what I've gone through over the last 24 hours. And I've had a bit of a dip again in my motivation. I procrastinated a lot. I ended up watching a bit of TV yesterday, which I probably shouldn't have. I haven't really associated enough pain to that watching TV and pain to pro procrastination. Um, I've got to keep reinforcing that the success is the pleasure. I'm going to get more more pleasure out of the success of, of being what I want to be and, and achieving these goals of becoming successful as a life coach. That's what I'm going to get pleasure from. The pain is in the procrastination and each time I procrastinate, I need to draw on that being um, unable to achieve that success so it becomes pain. Um, and I've faced that in the last 24 hours. It's not going to happen every day. It can happen every day and I've got to get myself to it. So there we go. I've just said it's not going to happen every day. Um, I've got to train myself and focus myself and get myself to the point where every day I'm motivated, I'm keen for pleasure, I want that success. 
a uh, little bit of other frustration, um, which once I think about it, it's the frustration's gone. I found a new way to reframe it. One of the training companies I work with, I train in business and management, um, has just restructured their whole business. We basically went into their website, um, dozens or hundreds of students who submit their assignments. We just pick, download their assignment, mark it and upload it, or download it, mark it and comp, uh, un satisfactory, give them reasons why, help them out with the assessment and send it back. They've restructured that now where they want us to look after an individual student and help them with any questions they've got regardless of what unit. Where I faced a problem, it talks about content as in the assessments um, questions and also administration questions and we're meant to propose the answers to the administration questions that these students have. I know nothing about their website, I know nothing about their learning system that the students go through, I know nothing about their administration and when doing these courses you have the options to pick and choose different units. There are some units I'm not qualified with and the first one of the first uh, emails was which I received yesterday, a student was asking a question about a unit that I don't train. Um, and this person within this company assigned me to that person to answer that question, but I'm not qualified to answer that. So my first train of thought was, well, how is this company doing this? You know, they're letting down this student, they're letting me down as a trainer. The students contacted their last uh, training support person and this other person's come back saying, no, that lump person is no longer in the company. We've assigned you to another trainer. So straight away, that person is feeling neglected or left out or, or, or whatever, that student. So now that that relationship she built up with that trainer, she's got to build a new relationship with a new trainer and she feels let down that that's happened. Now, if I turn around and say to this girl, well, sorry, I can't help you. I don't know anything about this. It brings on confusion. It brings frustration. And that's what's actually happened to me. Um, I feel like it's incompetent to assign me to a student or doing a unit that is specifically on her mind. If I was assigned her from the beginning and 70% of the units I train, fine. Then as I work with her and build rapport, I can get to the point where I say, look, the unit you're now working on is not a unit I'm qualified to do, so give me your questions, I'll put you in touch with another trainer, or I will go direct to that trainer and I'll find the answers for you. Uh, but that rapport hasn't been built yet, and that's where my frustration came in. I was explaining it to Nick, she was calming me down, getting me to think of it from a different angle. It's pure and simple. I might not be qualified to, to answer these questions, but I can learn about it and I can hand provide suggestions. So I can read this material. I can charge the company for what I'm doing. I feel guilty doing that. I feel like all someone had to do with that company was realise that no, I'm not qualified to. So I assign that student to another trainer. Makes sense to me, but that's not my problem. That's not my control. I can only do what they've asked. If they question why I'm invoicing them for doing this for stuff, I, will, I can simply say, well, you assign this student to me. I need to learn that unit to be able to encourage them. I'm not going to do it for free. I'm going to charge you for it. Makes sense? Moving on. Um, quick one on my sleeping habits. Uh, I'm working towards going to bed at 10.30 every night, uh, reading for half an hour. And I used to be a bit of a lazy bum when I wanted to focus on my own business to run my own hours. I'd get up anywhere between 8 and 9 o'clock in the morning. Uh, I convinced myself that I was an afternoon evening worker. I liked working into the night. I used to go to bed at 1 o'clock in the morning, all that sort of stuff. Now that I'm going to bed at a regular hour, I'm actually getting up earlier and earlier. It was at a point where I'd wake up around 7 and I liked lying in bed thinking and just creating ideas and letting my mind run wild and, and plan and, and do all these sort of things. I'm now getting up, waking up at five o'clock in the morning um, and lying there for an hour, an hour and a half and just letting my brain go wild. I um, keep my goals and whatnot on one page and then on the other page I take notes. That's this morning, it's 8.30, I've already taken my page of notes, I've got nowhere else to put notes in for the day, so I've got to find somewhere else where I can keep notes. Um, which I'm loving. I'm planning out all this stuff for a business that hasn't even evolved yet. I, I'm not even qualified um, to, as a life coach, but I've got all these ideas and concepts purely because I'm letting my brain run, run, run wild. One thing with those sleeping habits, though, I will mention um, as a final point. Uh, I did mention a couple of weeks ago that my I'd never dreamt before. I didn't really remember my dreams. Uh, and they started becoming quite vivid dreams, and I remembered what was going on. Really, really interesting sort of stuff. That stopped. I uh, don't know what it is. Uh, I don't seem to be remembering those dreams. I don't know if it's that I'm not sleeping as much. 
Um, I, you know, going to sleep at 11 o'clock, I'm waking up at 5 o'clock at 6 hours, am I in that deep sleep? Don't know. Um, maybe a dream expert or someone knows more about that, but that's not my area, it doesn't bother me. What I thoroughly enjoy is that hour or so of just lying in bed thinking about how things are going to work. And I'm actually visualising what I'm saying on this stage of 500 people in front of me and how I've got to that point of filling that room and what strategies I use to to get the leverage from other coaches to bring people along and um, the the stories that I'm going to tell in the, in the um, seminar and how I'm going to introduce other coaches and how I'm going to tie what I say into what the other coaches are saying. I'm loving it. Uh, and I've done this before. It's just when I've got to the point of actually fulfilling whatever it is I'm thinking about, I haven't got there. Um, and that's whether or not the goal wasn't strong enough, whether I wasn't committed enough, that's all changing and that's where I'm going. And this is what this process is. So that's it, 21st of November, day 45, it is a Friday, um, last weekend I only recorded uh, on the Sunday, may do it again, may not, we'll see how we go, might do two, might do one, may even do three, alright, see ya.